<laughs> Who's got the first hand? John? All right. John Dutton? Guess what we're going to ask Ellie. What, who are you going to start with tomorrow? Uh, our game one starter will be uh, Q. Quintana will take game one. Miles will take game two. Why, uh, what was your reasoning for that behind that? Um, gosh, we, uh, we thought of it quite a bit at the end of the day. Um, Q's done a phenomenal job. He's uh, on a mission. And he's performed extremely well. Uh, and when you look at uh, this series and the top of that lineup and just matching up overall, we felt pretty good about him taking game one. Katie? Ollie, when you take into consideration what Jose Quintana has accomplished in his career, what does it mean for him? Have you conversed with him about the meaning of starting a postseason game? Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun to be able to sit him down and let him know that he was taking that first game. Um, there's excitement on his side, obviously. but. Uh, He's had a pretty good career, and he, he came here, and we talked about it as soon as he got here. There's something about it. Just look in his eyes. He, he was on a mission. Uh, he was pitching for something meaningful, and he took every start and every pitch he made um, like it was his last pitch. And uh, it was good to be able to sit him down and say, hey, man, you, you've earned this, but you, you've got game one. Yeah. Um, I know it's sometimes awkward talking about your boss, but can you put into words uh, Mosellock and what he did with this trade, the two trades, the deadline, how that enhanced your team, and obviously you got a game one starter out of it. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's been talked about enough. It was an unbelievable um, trade deadline for us when you identify the needs that we we had, and it was stabilizing the rotation, and then um, adding a couple arms in that pen. But uh, at the end of the day. Was it the shiniest objects and the what everybody was talking about? Absolutely not. Uh, we won at the trade deadline. That's the big reason why we're here today and able to sit here looking at a playoff run. Um, what Montgomery and Q have done for this club is unbelievable. Yeah. What uh, goes into your game three starter? And what you didn't name, I know. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and also, what's your configuration, 13-13 or 14-12? Uh, yeah, we're still working through that. I um, actually just left the meeting with our staff, uh, deciding if we're going to go 14-12 or 13-13. I'll announce that once I speak to all the players. Um, yeah, and there's a reason I announced game one and two. Uh, if we get to game three, I'll announce it then. John and then Jeff. Ali, uh, uh, Philadelphia hits a lot of home runs. Q has only given up one home run since he's been in St. Louis. How much did that factor into it, the fact that he keeps the ball in the ballpark, keeps it down, hits his spots? Yeah, that's what's led to his performance, is just his ability to locate, mix well. Um, he trusts all his stuff, and he's just, at the end of the day, he's just performed. Um, he's not going to scare, and he can handle the stage. So, yeah, he keeps guys in the ballpark. We know this club um, hits their share of homers. But, uh, at the end of the day, he's on the ground, and he's done a really nice job. So we trust him with game one. I'll to listen to you talk about Q and the way that he pitches for something a little bigger than himself and the way that he's able to sort of handle mm -hmm. the broader concept of this moment. It seems to be a pretty good indication of the way you all have played all year with the guys that you have at the points they are in their career. Is there something to that, to, to Quintana being able to set a pace based on that, based on what he's done in his career, and then also sort of the broader concept of how you all have played. Yeah, he can draw from experience. Um, he's done it a while. He understands what gives him success. He's confident in who he is. And uh, when you're on a stage where there's three games, you got to win two or you go home, um, he's going to be able to handle that. And at the end of the day, we felt very confident and comfortable making that decision. Then Fred, and then Derek. Ali, fluidity and flexibility have played a big role in your all's success this season. Yeah. How much is it going to play a role in the postseason? Um, it'll play a big role. It really will. We have a lot of versatility, not only in our position players, but also in uh, our rotation and our bullpen. And uh, everyone will contribute to us moving this thing along. So it's, uh, it's been that way all year. Um, we've mixed and matched, and uh, not only with our lineup, but with the way we use our guys out of the pen. And this will be no different. Molly, to, to piggyback, pun intended, on what <laughs> Hummel had asked about, will you have all five 
of your starters from the rotation at the end of the season on the roster? And will three of them be available starting from game one, depending on need? Uh, that is correct. They will all be on the roster, and we will use all of them. Can you maybe describe some of the roles you see them fitting? And we talked a lot about Jack, but where Jordan and Adam might fit into relief roles or targeted matchup roles? Uh, yeah. Um, it, it, it all depends on how the game looks. And uh, all those guys are prepped to be able to be used however uh, the game dictates. Um, we're going to take our shot, and they'll be ready from the very beginning. So Q has game one, Miles has game two. Um, the rest of those guys, we can use them however we please, and we will. Uh, Corey and then Katie. Ali, just how important was it to get that division win to have all three of these games at home in this first round? It's important. We've played well at home. Um, <laughs> the last week or so, I mean, all year, but the, the fan base has been unbelievable. And uh, what we experienced that last three here uh, before we went on the road to Pittsburgh was, uh, was incredible. I've never seen it that way. Um, it was loud. They were into it. And uh, our guys feed off of that. We enjoy it. So being able to play these three at home, pretty important. Ali, to go off what Derek just mentioned, there is a way, or are you at least computing a way for if one of your starters piggybacks off Quintana in game one, there would still be a way for that starter to be available in game three if necessary? Uh, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you, you win these two or you go home. And our guys understand that. So they'll be available for whatever's needed and uh, whatever role they're called on. So absolutely. If someone throws in game one, are they available? Yeah, no doubt. How's Ryan Helsley today? Uh, we'll find out here. This morning he's felt really good. Saw the doctor. Um, no symptoms, which is great. He's going to throw here in a little bit at one. And uh, our hope is that we're good to go. Daniel and then Kamish. Ollie, I know Zach Wheeler has been tough against you guys in the regular season this year. Um, it's been tough against a lot of people, but continue. Um, what's, the benefit, what's the benefit of having seen that already and going into game one tomorrow? Let's say the last part again. Um, what's, the, is there, what's the benefit of having seen him in the regular season a couple times? Uh, yeah, we know we're facing a good guy. This guy, uh, he's done it for a while. He's, uh, he's a good competitor. And uh, his skill set is off the charts. We're going to see some good pitching here over the next couple of days. And uh, it'll be a nice challenge and, and one we welcome. But uh, yeah, we've seen him a couple times. Good pitcher. We're looking forward to it. Wainwright wasn't very good the last month, but he yeah. has had some success against the Phillies, including a complete game loss to, to Wheeler. How much consideration did you a lot. give him for this one of these first two? A lot. There was a lot of tough decisions. Um, I trust that guy with my life, let alone one of these games, right? So you sit there and you think through um, how do you use him. And we talked quite a bit about dead arm and his delivery and not feeling right his last several starts. And, and that obviously played into the decision to start Q and Miles. But um, with everything on the line, it's hard not to bet on him in, in one of these games. Um, he got some work done yesterday, felt a lot better about where he's at. So it was a, it was a really tough decision, tough conversation. But um, it's an understatement to say that he was an absolute pro about that conversation. It was uh, pretty impressive. Bob and then uh, John. Hey, Ali, do you have a, uh, a favorite Albert Pujols story or memory this season, not on the field, maybe in the clubhouse, off the field, that you'll always cherish? Man, that's a good one. Uh, one I'd like to give more thought to. Uh, the one that comes to mind is what I shared with, with some of our guys uh, here in the St. Louis media. Um, after he hit 700, it was pretty cool to see him just kind of tuck away into the tunnel. And uh, it was just him down there, just face in his hands, um, crouched down. And, and you can just tell he was taking in everything that he had accomplished, everything that's taken place in order for that moment to actually happen. Um, no cameras, no nothing, just him by himself. Uh, you just start to think through everything, all the sacrifice, everything that's had to take place in order for that moment for everybody to enjoy that 700. And um, that's one of the more meaningful ones. Um, seeing that was, I'll remember that for a long time. You think you're in this position without him, particularly the second half? No, not even close. 
I think uh, we've had a lot of different contributors throughout the year. What our corner guys have done and Nolan and, and Goldie is unbelievable. And their ability to take the field every day with no days off, uh, they hate coming off the field regardless. Extra in a game, day game the next day, they, they answer the bell every day. Um, without them, we're not here. Um, I mean, you can go down the list. We've had different people contributing at all different types of the year, but what Albert has done in the second half has been remarkable. Yeah. John? Uh, the Phillies, two big bats, Swarber and, and Harper. Um, have you decided how many lefties you want on your roster, uh, young guys? Uh, how, many, how many lefties do we have out of the bullpen? Uh, yeah, we talked about it quite a bit, and that's the – the last decision um, that we're making is uh, Matt's obviously on, Thompson's on, and then uh, we'd like to carry a third lefty. And that's a decision we'll make here in the next couple hours. Rob, how are you talking? You talk about, talk about um, Goldschmidt and Arenado all year, but what have you seen from them lately, the struggles they've had in September that has caused them not to play as well? Uh, that, that they're human. Um, even with those struggles, they're the best hitters in the league. Um, they've uh, contributed at a high level all year, and they're at a two, three-week period where it hasn't looked the way they want. Um, but uh, I, I'll tell you this, mentally they're both in a good spot today, which is all I care about. Um, you turn on those lights and you fill that stadium tomorrow, it's, uh, it's a different animal, and uh, they'll rise to the occasion. So. My level of concern of them contributing starting tomorrow is zero. Any last questions for Al? Just curious what the Phillies have done. They went through a lot of turmoil. They make a change at manager, and here they are. Appreciation for you of what they've overcome and yeah. how they've had to get to this point? Absolutely. Anytime. I mean, if you're a fan of the sport or just competition in general, that's you, you like seeing that. You like seeing um, a group's ability to kind of overcome adversity and, and get to this point. Um, the majority of the teams that are in the playoffs have had to do that. You, you, you go through parts of the season where everyone's doubting you, and then you figure out a way to come together and uh, still get it done. And that's the that's the part that fans love, right, is seeing, and seeing teams' ability to do that and then finish well. So we've had our ups and downs, um, pitching, offense, you name it, right, and, and won the division. They've had their ups and downs. They've, they've gone through their, their share of adversity. So it'll be fun. That's what it's all about. That's what sport's all about. Yeah.